So in radar interferometry, we looked at how you would measure the phase of the wave, and by measuring it at different locations, that would give you some information on the direction of the signal. Now, I want you to imagine a different situation, which is if, if this is the surface that I'm trying to measure, if my signal comes in and bounces back on one measurement, but I come back to exactly the same location, so I bring my antenna to exactly the same place it was for the first measurement, and this target shifts by some different distance, then the wave has to travel an extra distance. And if that extra distance is a proportion of a wavelength, we will measure the impact on the phase of the signal returning as a consequence of the shift of the Earth's surface. It's in this way that we can do deformation measurements of the Earth's surface. So that might be uh, subsidence, it might be uh, an earthquake or volcanoes uh, moving as a consequence of magma building up. But the key thing is that because we're measuring on this, the, the phase of the wave, is that as we move the surface, actually what we want is the, the surface to only move a little bit, a fraction of a wavelength. If it moves many wavelengths, we'll have difficulty measuring that. But if it just moves a fraction of a wavelength, we will measure the phase difference as a consequence of that, and we can then determine how much the ground surface has moved. Now, on this kind of wavelength, this is a, a model of a C-band wavelength, about five centimetres. If we're talking about fractions of a wavelength at C-band, we're talking only about centimetres, millimetres even. And as a consequence, this means that we can actually map the movement of the Earth's surface on a scale of only a few centimetres. In actual fact, if it moved much more than a few centimetres, so many wavelengths, we wouldn't be able to see it. It's actually because it is so small that we're able to detect it with a radar system. There are some challenges and uh, technical challenges to interpret that data and analyze it in a way which takes into account all the other factors going on. But it's, it's certainly possible under some, some circumstances to see that Earth movement. And if you make measurements over a long period of time and that you have some very stable scatterers, there are approaches like permanent scatterer interferometry whereby you're just looking at those key targets that have been static and stable over a long period of time and all they've been doing over that period of time is slowly changing. And with those kinds of measurements you can actually make measurements on a scale of a few millimetres per year of movement of the Earth's surface. But you're measuring it over a long period of time. <laughs> 